Moving on from the previous graphics tutorial where we created a lower third strap line for people's names and we used transitions to animate the strap line on and off. In this case we used a wipe to wipe it on and a dissolve to fade the caption out. In this tutorial I'm going to look at how to animate elements within the graphic itself. So first of all here I'm actually going to add the graphic anew from the browse button here. So in the last tutorial we looked at how to save out a new template. I'm going to use that because it has the generic text on it. I'm going to scroll to the bottom, here it is, and drag that onto an area of the timeline. So this was the default graphic. To add any additional elements or animation to this, I need to select the graphic on the timeline. And rather than using the edit panel over here, which gives you no options for actual animation, we're going to move across into the effects controls tab. So if you're not on this already, you click on the effects controls tab here to select it. Now with the graphic selected, in the same way as if you selected a clip, you would see any of the intrinsic and added effects controls uh, that had been applied to that clip. If you select a graphic, you see similar options to do with the graphic itself. So you have a separate set of controls for each of the graphics elements. So we've got two text lines here. See them up there. You can see them here in effects controls. And the bar itself, the shape, which I renamed bar in the previous tutorial. We also have the normal intrinsic effects controls. So motion, opacity, and time remapping. These are going to affect things like scale and position of the entire graphics frame opacity of the whole graphic itself and variable speed effects for the graphic. If you want to animate individual elements within the graphic rather than the entire graphic, ignore the motion controls there and use the graphics controls up here. So just to open these up, we've got vector motion first of all. So this is affecting the scale, position, rotation, and the anchor point position for rotation, so it will rotate around a different point of uh, the uh, of the entire graphic itself. I'm just going to undo everything that I just did there, just to get that back to where it was. So that's affecting the entire graphic. If you open up the individual elements, so for example, if I open up the shape, now what we're seeing is the controls just for the bar itself, or if I look at one of the text options, so the type title here, line of text, these options are just to do with the text. So there is some overlap between these controls and the controls you see over here. If I select the same line of text here, you can see the text formatting options are in both panels. But there is an additional set of controls here to do with scale position, etc. of that text and rotation of that text. And more importantly, We've got the stopwatches we need to animate these controls and we've got reset buttons for everything and we've got our keyframe timeline in here as well. I've looked at in a previous tutorial how to animate effects using keyframes. We're going to use the same principles here to animate some of the elements within our lower third. So I've got a bit more room on this side of the interface. I'm going to make the effects controls window a little bit bigger. I'm going to make the essential graphics panel a little bit smaller because I'm going to use the controls over here rather than over here. And let's make the timeline area a bit smaller as well. We don't necessarily need to see the whole of the timeline. So I'm giving myself a bit more room on the layout side of things here. I'm also going to make the timeline area of the effects controls panel a little bit wider by moving just to the edge of where the reset buttons are and dragging to the left slightly. I still need to make sure I can see all the controls here. Though. That's quite important. The first thing to do when you're animating anything is think about what do you want your animation to look like, what are you going to animate. So we'll keep this relatively simple. What we will do is we'll animate the bar to move onto the screen left to right, hold for let's say six seconds and then animate off again and we'll have that animation itself take 12 frames on and 12 frames off. Once the bar has animated on we'll then fade up the first line of text and maybe do something with the scale of the second line to make that one appear and again we'll do those we'll have those animate on simultaneously and take an additional 12 frames 
So the overall animation is taking approximately a second. And then before the bar moves out again, we're going to fade down the text and scale down the subtitle line of text. So I'm gonna bring my playhead back in the effects controls tab to the first frame of the clip. And I need to find the relevant controls here. So I need to make sure, I'm gonna close everything else up, make sure I've opened up the shape bar. Let's close up vector motion as well. I'm gonna scroll down and here are the controls that affect things like position, scale, rotation, and so on of just that object. Just to show you, look, here's scale. So that's just affecting the bar now. If I undo that, here's position, here's rotation, and so on. We are gonna animate position. Now, at the end of the animation, I want the bar to be back where it is now. So I'm actually gonna work backwards here. We're gonna go 12 frames forwards, set a keyframe in the current position of the bar, then go back to the first frame again and shift it off to the left. When you then play that forwards, it will animate the bar on. So let's do that first. So I'm gonna go 12 frames forwards. I've got my little time code down here for the effects controls window. I'm gonna click in there and I'm gonna type in plus, that tells the playhead to jump forwards through the clip, 12, and that tells it to jump forwards 12 frames. When I now hit enter, you see my playhead has jumped forwards there and I'm gonna keyframe the current position of the bar by clicking the stopwatch there next to position. I'm gonna bring my playhead back to the first frame of the clip. Now, because I don't wanna make sure the bar doesn't move up or down, I'm actually gonna hover over the X position, the horizontal position of the bar, which is this number here. That's the vertical position. So I get this little hand symbol up, hold my mouse down, drag to the left, and that will start moving the bar off. A little trick here is if you hold shift down once you start doing this, it makes it much less sensitive so you can make a bigger move with less of a mouse movement. There we go. So I'm just gonna bring that so it's just off the edge of the screen to the left. When I hit play now, that's gonna animate onto the screen. Then I'm gonna to go to the end of the graphic. So drag my playhead all the way to the right. I'm gonna go backwards 12 frames this time. So I'm gonna click in the little time code here, do minus 12 to jump backwards 12 frames. I now need to keyframe the bar as it is now. Because it's not changed, I'm gonna use the add keyframe button to do that. I could also copy this keyframe and paste it where the playhead was by just doing Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V on a PC. But I'm gonna hit the add keyframe button so that forces a new keyframe in at whatever this is currently set to, which is the position with the bar on the screen. We're then gonna go forwards to the last frame of the graphic there and I'm gonna do the reverse of what I did before. I'm gonna click back over there, just drag this off again. And that should animate it back off. So if I bring my player back to the start, we just test that, it moves on. And it moves off again. And I'm just gonna smooth that slightly by adding some ease to the keyframes here. So this keyframe where it animates on, I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna go temporal interpolation because this is a move. This is the one that actually smooths the timing of the animation as opposed to the actual path along which it animates. Uh, so I'm gonna to go to there, I'm gonna to go to ease in, and I'm gonna select this one here. Again, temporal inter right click, temporal interpolation, and I'm gonna do an ease out on that one. So that should just slightly smooth the start and the end moves there. Okay, so that's the first bit of the animation. Let's now animate our first line of text. So I'm gonna go and line up with this keyframe here. Now I can do that easily by just using the little arrows next to the add keyframe button here and jump to the keyframe that I wanna line up with. I'm gonna close up the shape bar just for a minute and let's do the title text next. So I'm gonna open this line up Here's all the font stuff, let's scroll down. Let's actually close all this up by clicking on source text. And here's the transform controls again. So on this one, we're gonna fade it up. So we're just gonna use opacity. I'm gonna start with a zero opacity. So I'm gonna change that value to zero. You see the text disappears over here. Click the stopwatch for opacity. Go forwards 12 frames again. So I'm gonna click in the time code down here. Type in plus 12, enter. That then jumps the playhead forwards 12 frames. 
and I'm going to set the opacity back to 100. If I test that now, it's always worth actually testing this as you go along so you know that everything is working. If I test that, you see that fades the text up. Now we need to do the fade down. So I'm going to temporarily open the shape up again so I can see its keyframes. And let's close up a bit of stuff there. And I'm going to use the little arrow there to jump to the keyframe where the animation with the bar moves out starts from. And I'm going to go backwards 12 frames. So I'm going to click in my time code again, minus 12, enter. So that jumps the playhead backwards 12 frames. Let's close up the shape again. So this would be the point where I want the text to start to fade out. So we're going to add another keyframe at 100% opacity. I can do that by clicking the Add Keyframe button again because we're already on 100% there. Or let's show you the other way of doing this. I'm going to click on the existing keyframe where it is set to 100%. Copy it. Again, I'm using Mac, so Command-C and Control-V to paste. Paste it back in at the playhead position. And again, I've got two keyframes with the same value. So it will hold that opacity between those two keyframes. I'm then going to go forwards 12 frames. So click in the time code again, plus 12. Enter and set that opacity back down to zero. By clicking in and typing this time. And if I play that now, that should fade the text up and fade it down again. There we go. So that's all working. Using the same timing, I'm now going to scale up the subtitle text. So I'm going to jump back to the first keyframe for the title text. I'm going to use the little arrows again now because I've got those to jump back to that keyframe there. And we're going to open up the other line of text. Let's close up source text. And we go to scale. I'm going to set the scale to zero. That will effectively make the text disappear. And we're going to set the stopwatch for scale. I'm going to go forwards 12 frames again, so I'm going to click in the time code, plus 12, enter, and set that scale back to 100%. Let's just test that now. So that should then scale that line of text up. We need to reverse that animation at the end of the graphic. So I'm going to just scroll down so I can see the other keyframes. I'm going to time it with these two here, which is where the title text uh, fades out. So I'm going to use the arrow to jump forward to the keyframe that starts the fade out animation. Come back up here, set another keyframe at 100%. I'm going to use the add keyframe button this time, which is a bit quicker than copying and pasting. And then jump forwards 12 frames. So click back in my time code, plus 12, enter, and set the scale back down to zero. So if we test all of that now, as you can see, the bar moves on top line fades up, the bottom line scales up, and then that should all reverse on the way out. That's our animation done. Now the only problem here is, if I decide I want to make that graphic longer or shorter, so bear in mind, if you were doing something like this for people's names, you might have different durations that you need to fit that into. It might be that you only see a certain person for say four seconds, you see another person for eight seconds when they first appear. And if you had your graphic set to eight seconds, when you put it over the four second gap, it's gonna to be too long. So you need to trim it and change the duration of it. So on the timeline, let's uh, look at it over say this gap here. So I'm just gonna delete the one that was already there and move this one down. So this is obviously a longer space. And let's just say for the sake of argument, I wanted that name strap to cover that space. The problem I have is this, if I now extend the end of this out, like so, and play it, the keyframes are still in the same position. So the graphics got longer, the in will work at the start like it did, but the out will then disappear and there's a massive gap after it in the graphic where you're not gonna see anything because it's all moved off. So it's not actually made the animation any longer, but it just made the graphic longer. I could fix this by moving the keyframes within the graphic, but I'd have to do that every time I wanted to reuse this for different durations. Let me just undo that for a second. We have an even bigger problem if I wanted to make this shorter. If I just zoom in slightly on the timeline here, if I trim the end of the graphic back like so, so it's shorter now, and I hit play, we've trimmed it back so it's ending before the out keyframe, so you're not gonna see the out animation at all now. It just blinks off. 
Okay, so we'll undo that again. So this has been thought about with Premiere and there is a way of fixing the animations at the start and the end of the graphic. Now bear in mind, my animation at the start in total comes to 24 frames. At the end also comes to 24 frames. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix the first 25 frames of the graphic so that you always see the animation in those first 25 frames and I'm gonna fix the last 25 frames of the animation so you always see the graphic in the last 25 frames of the animation. If you then make the graphic longer or shorter, what it does is it keeps the animations in at the start and the end, but then just extends the middle section of the graphic so you would still see the type and so on, regardless of the length of the graphic itself. Now to do this, we're gonna come back over to the Essential Graphics panel for a minute. Let's make it slightly bigger. And you can see in here, there's an intro duration option and an outro duration option. You see these where you have the graphic itself selected rather than any of the individual items in the graphic. So I'm just gonna deselect the graphic, click back on it. So I've got the whole graphic selected here. Now what you do is you work out how long you need to fix at the start and the end of the graphic. So I said 25 frames or effectively one second for me. So I'm gonna click in the intro duration here. I'm gonna type in one zero zero. That means one second and zero zero frames. Hit enter. And if we come back over and have a look now, can you see there's a gray shaded area here at the start of the graphic? That indicates that that area of the graphic is fixed and you will always see it no matter how long the graphic is. I'm gonna do the same for the end now. So I'm gonna to go to outro duration here, type in 100 again, enter. That fixes the last second of the graphic and you see I've got a similar gray area here over the last second and that will combine all of the keyframes in those two areas. Let me just play it again. So this is the original duration. We're still seeing the in and the out. If I now make the graphic shorter, remember before that trimmed back so we didn't see the out animation. Now it's much shorter, but we're still seeing the animations working. Or again, if I make it longer, same thing. There's the start one. We've got a longer middle section now and you see the animation out at the end. Final thing just to mention, we looked in the previous tutorial at saving this as a new template. I'm gonna do the same with this one. And uh, this time, because we've included these intro and outro durations options and fixed the animation, that will be included as part of the template. So I'm gonna do a right click on the graphic itself. I'm gonna to go to export as motion graphics template. I'm gonna tell it to export to my library. Let's call this uh, training lower third animated click OK if we have a look in the browse option here if I scroll down there it is towards the bottom and let's just delete the one that was on the timeline look here's the template saved one OK that you can see if I select it we have those same grey areas fixing the start and the end animations. All I now need to do is go in and change the text. And there we go, 